Really excited to be here today. Always love to be cooking outside. We've got Adam from Wine Selectors here and we've got a beautiful array of strawberries, lots of ways, grown in the Mornington Peninsula because they do that spectacularly and they do some other things pretty spectacularly too. They do, yes. they do and Elaine thank you very much for having me and you're right the colours in front of us look amazing, the perfume those strawberries <laughs> you've know. cut kind of just wafting <laughs> up aren't they? But yes Mornington Peninsula and rightly so is one of Australia's premier wine regions um, particularly for Pinot Noir and Pinot Gris so I've brought along one of each to pour Excellent. and we can have a little nose of that while we watch you create what you've got in front here. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, we sort of we wanted to really celebrate the strawberries to go along with the wines, and we sort of thought, what better way when you've got a beautiful product or produce that is in season? It's usually in abundance, so we wanted to give you a few little tips and tricks how to celebrate that when you've got so many strawberries. So the first thing that we're going to do is actually roast some. So that aroma that you're smelling is only going to increase. Oh, brilliant. <laughs> brilliant. So we're going to roast these ones in a little bit of olive oil and some pepper. I'm quite looking forward to this because I think a lot of people perhaps see strawberries and fruit in general as something that you have maybe as a last course in only a dinner. Only dessert, only sweet. Or on a cheese plate or something. Absolutely. But you're going to show us how to do it in a savoury touch. A bit of a savoury touch so we are touching on some of those ideas of using a, a cheese board because we do have some goat's cheese here so mm -hmm. the saltiness really brings out the sweetness so yep. in terms of complementing each other it's sort of a bit of a match made in heaven in that sense Brilliant. but definitely we're sort of looking at more than just the strawberry what other layers can we get in there Perfect. so we're adding some heat to these ones we're going to add some acidity to some other ones i'm just going to really quickly put that in the oven 180 degrees probably about 10 to 15 minutes you want a little bit of color in them maybe starting to dehydrate starting to collapse and that adds another textural element to our dish perfect Whilst our strawberries are cooking in the oven, we're gonna get our pickled strawberries on the go with some balsamic vinegar. So I just wanna let these sit for a little bit because mm -hmm. they're actually going to start to pickle in there, which is gonna be the base for our dressing for this salad. And is there a period of time that you should let them sit? So I'd say for a minimum of 10 minutes, after about an hour, they're really gonna start to soften. So if you want that softened texture, that's perfectly fine. But if you still want a little bit of resistance when you buy it, 10 minutes is plenty. And I've poured for you a white and a red. So the white's Pinot Gris, mm -hmm. which the Mornington was actually the first region in Australia to produce Pinot Gris. Ah. And look, that's come to become a household favorite Absolutely. across Australia. And Pinot Noir. Um, the same climate, which is cool, warmer days, cooler evening, which is perfect for strawberries and raspberries Excellent. and all those delicious things, is perfect for Pinot Noir grapes. So. And so if we were going to be choosing to eat this, which would we go for? Is it a personal preference or would you choose, suggest one in a certain time of year? Or That's a very good question. I think it all comes down to your personal preference. If you've got friends who are over who are white wine drinkers, yeah. they're probably going to go towards Pinot Gris and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. At all. Excellent. Um, if you've got lovers of, of red wine, then the spiciness of that Pinot Noir and the lighter body mm -hmm. nature of it mm -hmm. is just going to be a perfect match and fusion for your strawberry dish. We've also got a couple little extra treats here. Yeah, so they've I've caught got my some... eye. <laughs> I wasn't quite sure what you'd done with those. So these ones are freeze-dried strawberries, which you can buy in this form in some shops. Okay. So depending on what equipment you've got at home, you can do a little bit of a cheat and buy some of those. Yep. I've just blitzed them up so that they're sort of more of a powder or a dust, which we're going to sprinkle over at the end and then our other one here is we've got these beautiful little strawberry chips that we've dehydrated so we've put them into a dehydrator for about 12 to 20 hours about 50 degrees you could do them in an oven at home they're perfectly fine to eat like that but we've got all of these different textures and flavors you can smell these Adam I but can. <laughs> they've just sort of started to go nice and jammy around the, uh, the sides so sort of leaching out or exaggerating all of that sweetness, enhancing all of their natural flavours. I had one nostril full of the perfume of that Pinot ah, and it comes along the waft of your strawberries. So. Our roasting strawberries have had enough time, our pickling strawberries have had enough time, so we can actually start putting all of this together. We're going to put it on a bed of watercress. Okay. So a little bit peppery. If you couldn't find watercress, could you use rocket? You could use rocket, absolutely. Great alternative. Yep. You could use baby spinach and just up the peppery content somewhere else okay. if you wanted to. So we might place some of our roasted strawberries strawberries in and around there. We'd like to be able to see a little bit of everything so that as you're sort of going through and tasting it, you're getting the flavor of the strawberry in lots of different layers. 
So I'd be interested to hear what you think when you sort of go through the wine as well. Because we've kind of looked at matching like for like here. Mm -hmm. Obviously you've got that amazing strawberry character coming through, but you've added a little bit of acidity with the balsamic, you've added a touch of pepper, and we're looking at these wines and looking how do they complement all those aspects of your amazing dish. And then we're going to add some of the creaminess and the acidity from the goat's cheese. So wherever possible, this is all local, so what you can't get sort of from um, the, the markets might not be worth getting. This is just all fresh and amazing. And you made the point before about being in season and the abundance of it. Yes. To correct me if I'm wrong, but when a, a fruit or a vegetable or anything is in mm -hmm. season, they not only taste better, but they're cheaper too, right? And better for you. Riper, more flavorful, cheaper. Mm. So you just gotta celebrate it when it's available. These are dry basil seeds. Okay. And if we add water to them, they become these kind of slightly alien looking. Sure. <laughs> I actually thought they may have been like chia seeds or something. Absolutely. So similar kind of concept. They go up to about 18 times their weight in volume when you add water to them. Wow. But they are going to be another little extra textural garnish to this dish. I just love the white from the goat's cheese. I think that's really important in terms of contrasting flavors, textures, and colors. Got some toasted slivered almonds here. So again, references to your cheese board earlier, so mm -hmm. having fruit and nuts together. Yes, I think both of those wines would work really well with this dish. And as you said earlier, this could be a starter, it could be an entree, it could be a canapé, you could do little little pots of it, so mm -hmm. little individual servings, or you could actually bring it out towards the end. So we've got all of these beautiful juices that are sort of oozing from these strawberries, so I think anyone who's sensible is going to want to mop that up. Yes, <laughs> that's the best bit, right? <laughs> So we've got our basil seeds. So I'm just gonna take a few of those. As I put that, those white bits of the cheese down, I wanna make mm -hmm. sure that some of those are visible there because it sort of acts as a bit of a blank canvas so you can straight away see some of that texture. Some basil leaves with our basil seeds. This is a seasoning. This is one of my favorite seasonings. We've made it on the show before. Dehydrated olive crumbs. So this is very salty. So these are basically, I'm thinking, just black olives that you've dehydrated. Black olives, and we've done them in the microwave, actually. So these are our fresh strawberries. So you definitely want to have a few bits of those color, not all in one pile. It's actually quite funny, because I was looking at all the little different bowls of exotic ingredients you had in front <laughs> when we started, but this is really easy. You can totally it's do simple. it home. And I could do this. We've done it in less than, well, the roasting time, but less than five minutes for the plating. Yeah. So we've got our strawberry dust. Yeah. So we'll put a little bit of that on. You can certainly put it around the edge so that it's sort of framing your dish. Have you ever done this dish with raspberries or any other type of berry at all? You could do it with raspberries, but I do like the different textures and the robust quality of the strawberries. So mm -hmm. in terms of us being able to do all of these different things with it, yep. it sort of lends itself quite well to that. Very versatile. Absolutely. Oh, so I might actually stand some of those up. Just a little bit of height. A little bit of height. A hint as to what you're going to be eating and digging through. So you want to be getting a little bit of everything. Yep. So I'm quite excited about that. Five textures of strawberries, but nothing that can't be done at home. It takes away the fear that you might have thinking yeah. about plating up a restaurant style dish. Yes. But it's very accessible. Cheers. Cheers. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs>